All right, so this is my stage. I copied my last one over. The more sizzle, the more red. I'm up to this point right here, four frames into my nine frame storyboard, but it's taking me 11 frames to get there. I outputted all the frames and they went into my downloads. I exported them as JPEGs and numbered them. So I have one through 11 here. So just like I made a folder in assignment three for animatic frames, I want to make a folder for my animation frames. And I'll mark this as green because these will be my final frames. And this will be how I can test my animation. So I open up my downloads. I move all of those. Nice thing about numbering is them is it will keep them in order. Move all of those into my animation frames. There they are. And now I save my work in Photopea on the stage, on the assets. And then I go to where the assignment is and the assignment instructions. And it's going to show me the link to easygift.com. This is a different one than I used to make the animatic. This is another freeware one that gives us a few more options. And under that, I say select and choose files. I'm going to go to my assignments. And assignment three, it's good to be organized, my animation frames. I'm going to select everything in here, the first 11 frames of maybe a 50 frame animation, just to tell a story that I designed in nine frames. And then I'm going to, you see the files will be ordered alphabetically, so numbering them really helps. But we can switch to manually order them if you need to, but it's better just to label them. Then you say upload and make a GIF. This is just to run an animation test so far. Okay, and you see it comes in in order. And what's great about this is I can set the timing. I do it in fractions of a second, so in one one hundredth of a second. And what's nice is I can just say make a GIF now on these settings, these default settings, and see what it looks like. So that's pretty fast. Doesn't look like panting. It looks like he's being tased. You know. So I want to slow it down a little bit. So I just go, instead of 1 20th of a second, let's make it 1 33rd of a second, which is usually my default. And then I say make a GIF. Now I can also change them individually and set different timing. So if I wanted it to speed up here, I could. But let me just do it in a classical way. Let's make it a little bit slower. 40 fifths of a second, make a GIF. Or 1 45th of a second. Yeah, that's working pretty well. Then we have some other options as well. So the speed. I can actually just say, I like this, but if I wanted to express it a different way, I can say I want it slowed down to 80% of the current speed. And I can type this in too. Because if I don't want to do the math of how many fractions of a second would that be. So that's what I had before. This is now what I'd have. And that looks a little bit better because I don't have a lot of in-betweens. And now the, the what would you call it? <laughs> the impending doom of what it means to get redder and redder and to start to sizzle. You even start to get a little bit of uh, some marks in his eyes. That works. So then if I like that, then I just save it. And it will save as a gift to your downloads. You have to change the name of it. But this will be my first test. I'm just going to put it on my on my desktop. And then if I want to test that, I can open it in a browser.
So if I use Safari, which is what I use Safari for, it will show it to me and it looks good. And it shows me that in that last frame, there is some stuff in the eyes leaking through, really tiny. So that's why we do animation tests. So now when I go back to Photo P, I know to zoom in and look for that. Sure enough, it's there. And I can just clean it up right on the frame because that's easy enough with just a white brush. Okay, so I've done my first 11 frames, but I'm going to, I'm editing my 11th frame here. So now that I've done that, I don't want to keep my 11th frame anymore. So I go to my final frames and I'm going to just get rid of number 11. So I know that I have my first 10 good to go. I might mark that last one. Those are all good. In fact, I might mark all of them as green because those are the ones I've already brought in and they look good. I know I can get the finished result from that. Now by running that animation test when you're through, I recommend you do it once you're through your first three keyframes. You'll know if you're on the right path. You'll know if you have to create more frames than you're doing or if you're going too slow and you have to start speeding it up. You'll get a sense of that, and you'll get a sense of your workflow and your ambitions with the different assets you're playing with. This allows me now to go a little bit crazier and bigger with my images. I was worried that shrinking the head would be too much, the kind of constricting, but actually that worked, I think, pretty well. So now we're back to here, and now I want to build up the next thing, but I'm going to clean up the eyes. So that when I build the next one, it's already clean. And then I'm going to duplicate both the head and the eyes. And now I'm going to shrink the eyes a little bit more. Keep hitting Command T and I want Control T. <laughs> Excuse me. And now I'll hold down Option so they shrink towards the middle. And I think I can get away with about that much. And then I'll go in and paint that. I don't think I want a little stress in the eyes. I'll just keep it simple. You can paint in anything you want. You can composite in anything you want. This is our, our chance. Right. Okay, now, so the eyes are getting a little cross-eyed. So let me separate them out just a little bit more. And then hopefully I can just kind of make them wander from here on out and I'll move them together. I'm going to have them actually look to the look slightly to one side. So from here to here When your shapes and assets are simple, like tiny little things make a big difference. And that eye, eh, it looks better if it's more centered. Okay. So now flames can't go right to this. I mean, that'd be funny, but it doesn't quite keep in the spirit of what I'm doing. So instead, I'm going to show these little licks of flame from behind. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate these two and then move those behind. 
the latest copy of the head. I'm going to turn off these ones up here. And then I'm going to uh, merge them, Command E, and that will rasterize them. And then I'm going to Control T and warp it and start tucking it in behind my red hot dog. I've still got the, the smoke there to play with, but I just want the beginning of the flames to start moving like that. So now all of the smoke, I'm going to duplicate all four of these that are turned on, duplicate all four and then merge them together. Command E, turn off the four, now I've got all four of them to play with because I don't need to be so subtle with them anymore. And control T, and I'm just going to flip it horizontally. And then maybe move it down a little. So from this, command O to fit it all in. From this to this. So his eyes, they're really bugging out now. Now I can also have some fun on the head itself. I can add a layer style. So not only is he turning red, but I can actually add a gradient overlay <laughs> beneath his eyes. And I can set that not to be black to white, but to be some other gradient. Let's see what gradient do I want. A warm to cool. And I'm going to reverse that. And I can change that color. I don't want the, the green I might want. Something softer, like this. Now this is covering my whole pig, so instead of normal, or my whole dog, but instead of normal mode, I might choose a different blending mode. And I wish it would preview it, like Photoshop does. But soft light is a good one. And then I can set the opacity of it. So now, as he burns, or gets more and more fiery, instead of him just, his face turning red, he's going to start glowing with the color. Right? And I can fiddle with that as I want. Kind of flicker it in and out with the flames. So I can do that one. I can duplicate it and change that effect. And then do this one. Duplicate it. Change the effect. So maybe it's most extreme. Duplicate it. Change the effect. Maybe not soft light. Maybe pin light? No. Maybe linear light? What is it going to look like when he actually is getting consumed? Like vivid light is pretty extreme. That one's pretty nice, the overlay. So maybe I'll stop with that. So now I can just toggle through these when I want, and it will make it look like flames are flickering on my character. <laughs> until, <laughs> until he's just consumed. Ah, that's that's kind of great. All right, but let's see where it, I'm just building assets. So I'm at this point. So what's next? I want to build it with just some flames. And I lost my little eyes. There are my little eyes. And let's duplicate it one more time and let's turn off the effect here. Not the overall opacity, just the gradient overlay. So effects are really fun to play with, but you want to be subtle with them. So I'm just going to turn it on a little bit. So from this to this. Okay. I go to my topmost visible layer. It's the red one. I hold down shift. I select everything down to the bottom. If it helps, you can start moving things into groups. 
just to make it faster.